Hey, how are we doing? It's Ben from EQL Networks and Security. So today we are looking at Hikvision's Gen 2 4 megapixel color view turret camera now with LiveGuard. So the part number for this camera is going to be listed here. Now let's get right into this. So you're probably wondering what's the difference between Gen 1 and Gen 2? Well, Gen 2 now has AccuSense technology and LiveGuard built in, giving it the ability to identify and categorize between humans and vehicles enabling the user to program, schedule, or activate smart functions of the camera, such as its flashing lights or audible alerts. So let's take a closer look at this camera. The camera itself is made mostly out of metal with an IP67 rating, and it has a built-in white LED with a range of 30 meters to illuminate, you know, dimly lit environments. This camera is also capable of recording internally by its micro SD card and allows a 250 gig, gig storage, meaning you can record directly to the camera instead of an NVR. Now, the model we have is a 2.8mm version, but it's also available in 4mm and 6mm. Now, let's take a look at some Dory specs here. So, according to Hikvision, uh, it's able to detect at 65 meters, observe at 21, recognize at 13, and identify at 6. So, but before we go and check out the performance of this camera, if you're new to this channel and like what you see here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up. Any other questions or comments, don't be afraid to hit us up in that comment section below. Now, enough of this talking, let's go see how this camera performs. So here we go with the uh, 4 megapixel Gen 2. So as you can see here, the, the image, it's, it's really crisp, it's really sharp. Um, you know, it's a beautiful image here. Colors are great, everything's great about it. Now we'll start off with a bit of a walk test here. So walking along, you know, you can clearly make out colors, you make out some identifying features. We freeze it there, um, you know, it's what you expect from a camera in a daytime image. We'll continue along. Next one we'll do is a close-up walk test. If we freeze it there, uh, clearly make things out, be able to identify making colors and, and uh, some facial features there as well. We'll zoom into the car on the left. Uh, so number plates aren't exactly super crisp and clear, but you can make out and read the letters. Zoom onto the right. Once again, same thing. Not super crisp and sharp, but you can make out and identify numbers and letters in that particular point. And then what we'll do is we'll zoom into the middle number plate. Uh, struggling a little bit here, but we can still make out the letters and numbering uh, at that particular distance. And then in the tree line, a uh, little bit of little blur and softness uh, when we start zooming in. So what we'll do is we'll jump into the nighttime shot. Now this particular shot has the white light on. So purposely turn this white light on so you can see um, what it's like um, if you've got really dark ambient lights. And then and from that you can already see that the number plates are being reflected upon from that white light. Um, but overall it's still a great image. So walking along here, you can see motion blur isn't as bad as it normally is, um, but overall there still is that motion blur and all you're gonna be able to do uh, is basically identify colors. Now we'll do a close up walk test. If we freeze it there, um, at this particular distance, you know, you can start to make out some features and facial features, uh, but clearly you can see colors uh, of what a person may be wearing. Now we'll zoom into the car on the left. Uh, you can see there, apart from making out the color of the car, uh, you're not gonna make out any identifying features just because Probably the way the camera is set up as well, it's just always reflecting off the number plates uh, straight on. We'll zoom in on the middle here. It's not too bad, um, but you're not going to be able to make out any, any lettering or numbers either. And then we'll zoom in on the right. Uh, same thing. You can try to see some numbers here, but just with that white light reflecting off the number plate, you just miss all the detail. Now we'll zoom in on the tree line. Not going to be able to see anything at that particular distance either. So on this next shot, this is actually the white light turned off. 
Um, and you can see the difference that it made. Like it's just, it's basically changed the picture. Uh, it's a totally different camera with the white light off. Uh, and that's because we've got a bit more ambient light um, around. Uh, and that's the difference between having it on and having it off essentially. So we'll do our walk test. Because the light's off, you can see there's a bit more motion blur now, um, but you can still make out colors, just no identifying features. Next step, we'll walk up to a close, close to the camera, about three to four meters away. We'll freeze it there. Um, at this particular distance, and if you still, you're able to kind of make out identifying features and also colors. We'll zoom into the camera on the left. Now, now we can kind of see numbers and letterings because we're not getting this reflection. It's still not 100% clear, um, but you can make it out. And if we jump to the right, uh, you can see this particular case, maybe because of the angle, you can make out the letters and numbers a, a lot easier. And then we'll zoom in on the middle. Won't be able to see anything at that distance at all once again. So what are my thoughts on this camera? The camera performs as you would expect, just like any other camera during the day. You know, it produces clear images for a 4 megapixel camera. However, when needing to zoom into the picture, it does soften as you'd expect, but has enough detail to make things out like number plates. You know, they're not impossible to read, but they're still clear enough to be legible. During the night is where this camera truly shines. The camera surprisingly produces detailed images in dark uh, environments, maintaining decent quality for both vehicles and people. However, the quality suffers just like day footage uh, when zooming in. Motion blur can also be a little bit of a problem with moving objects. However, this could be um, fixed by adjusting some of the settings in the camera. But like always, we test cameras straight out of the box, mainly to do as each environment can be different with different ambient lights. You know, we'll probably look at doing a video showing the difference between straight out of the box and adjusting the camera uh, to its appropriate settings to see if that really actually makes a difference. Also, if using the 30 meter white LED, it would be possible uh, or best be possible to position this camera in a place where the light isn't directly reflected off number plates, for example. Yeah, you know, this would ensure that it'd be a bit more legible when captured by the camera. In my opinion, if the ambient allows it, disable that white light altogether to get the most out of the camera's nighttime performance. Overall, this camera performs similarly to its predecessor, 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 predecessor. Um, if it takes it to another level with its smart functions uh, by giving it AccuSense and LiveGuard technology. You know, it just makes it easier and a more intuitive camera to use. On that note, that's it for this video. If you found this video informative, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And while you're at it, hit us up in that comment sections below for any questions you may have. ADQL, we're always here to help and support your business.